Good morning. Welcome back to Austin News Today. Your time is now 740. Well, most of us have been thinking a lot about our noses lately with fall allergies here. But today, we want to talk more specifically about noses and nasal reconstruction that can help the appearance and function of your no nose. Joining us this morning is Dr. Adam Weinfeld with Seton, North, uh, Seton Hospital. Thank you so much for being here. You um, specialize in reconstructive plastic surgery, particularly rhinoplasty. So let's talk a little that, bit about that. That's correct. Yeah, I'm, uh, I, I should start by mentioning that I'm part of a larger group, uh, the Seton Institute of Reconstructive Plastic Surgery, and we all have focuses. Uh, and the website at the end will, will help direct you to, to what it is we each do. Noses is one of the things that I focus on. And I do both reconstructive and cosmetic surgery on the noses. Some of the patient examples that we're about to lead into uh, will give examples of what we're able to do to help restore a nose after, whether it be trauma, skin cancer, uh, uh, and then some of the examples will also lend themselves to a discussion of what we can do from a cosmetics uh, standpoint as well. Well, let's show what we have um, because some of the photos that we have are uh, people who have uh, been sub subjected to trauma and yeah. have had a it, reconstruction. Talk now, about this. And, I, and I should say that we've tried to blur this out a little bit to make it a little bit more uh, digestible for, uh, yeah. for an early morning right. forecast uh, or a broadcast, but uh, this is a patient who... Um, underwent trauma, she had uh, the tip of her nose amputated by a dog bite, unfortunately. Wow. And through a series of procedures, we were able to get her to a, a, a point where she was able to start school uh, with a nose. Um, so this is a multi-stage procedure over a two-month period. Oh, wow. the, the same uh, type of approach can be used for skin cancer, which we'll see in the next example. Uh, so this is a woman who uh, had a skin oh, wow. cancer. Uh, it was excised by a dermatologist. And then the patient comes and visits me, and I reconstruct it again through a, a multi-stage procedure over, over several months. Uh, and then the next example is the same uh, type of situation oh. where we have a gentleman who has a skin cancer. Uh, and you can see um, uh, in the after photograph, he's able to look in the mirror uh, you know, a year later and, and see a, a normal self. He has a normal image of himself with a normal nose. Right. Um, and then the final example uh, that we have is a patient a who suffered trauma um, uh, from a, a cheerleading accident uh, and had both functional, uh, meaning she had difficulty breathing, and uh, structural uh, aesthetic changes to her nose um, that were displeasing to her. She had actually already gone through one surgery to help improve her breathing uh, and restore the shape and was not able to achieve that. Um, uh, and, and so I brought her into my practice and we were able to bring about a nice result. And this is the kind of uh, example that I think lends itself to, to a discussion of how uh, reconstructive surgery lends itself to cosmetic surgery. And quickly, because we are in Central Texas, many people suffer from allergies and many people who have never lived here before suffer from allergies. So what can you do to help them breathe better and, and have more comfort? Well, you know, the, the, the first approach to, to allergies is generally um, uh, uh, taken upon by uh, the patient's primary care physician or uh, ears, nose, and throat physicians. Mm -hmm. uh, and and, and the, the treatment for that is generally medical initially. It's when the medical therapy such as nasal steroids does not um, does not solve the problem that we have to ask ourselves is there a functional problem that's related to the structure of their nose and, and that's where a surgeon such as myself can start to look into the nose uh, whether it be directly looking into the nose in an office or getting a CT scan to ask are there are there are there is the anatomy distorted uh, whether it be um, uh, congenitally from birth uh, developmentally uh, or through trauma which is the example for the right. for the last patient where does the airway be Become narrowed or altered, creating turbulent flow. Well, if you need more information, you can visit SeatonPlasticSurgery.com. Dr. Weinfeld, thank you so much for being yeah. here this morning. We thank appreciate you. it.